Good morning, parents, students, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Singapore Sports School's webinar session as part of our 2021 e-open house, which launches today. While we normally have a physical open house at the sports school with many tours and selection trials, we are unable to carry this out due to the pandemic and the need to have safe measures in place. As such, this year, we are all going online for our open house at the Singapore Sports School and we really warmly welcome all of you. My name is Erwin Seat and I'm the Director of Student Development and I will be the facilitator for this morning's webinar. Now, since we are unable to welcome you into our school physically this year, we've organized this session for you to understand more about our school. And for the next one hour, you will hear from our school principal, an alumnus national triathlete, Nicholas Rahmadi, and our current student athlete, shuttler, Jaslyn Hui. Now we will end this webinar with a question and answer session where our panel, which is made up of our school leaders, will answer all your questions. To start off this morning, our webinar, let me invite our school principal, Mr. Ong Kim Soon, to address all of you. Mr. Ong, please. Thank you, Erwin. Hi, good morning, parents, students, as well as any curious inquirers. Welcome to Singapore Sports School's e-open house. I'm glad that you could join us this morning because Singapore Sports School is not just any good secondary school. It is the only good sports school in Singapore. And it is here where the journey of a champion begins. The following is the agenda for my presentation. The sports school was established in 2004 and had gone through a number of significant transformation, starting with the establishment with a, of a partnership with the Auckland University of Technology, which has since ceased when we started the customized poly program with the Republic Polytechnic in 2011. We started the International Baccalaureate Diploma program in 2014, followed by another customized poly program with Mian Polytechnic. Next. The following are our mission, vision, and values. You will notice that character development sits at the center of what we do with our children. The school has nine sports academies where we provide coaching for the student athletes and an individual program where high performing student athletes who are in the national youth squads and are recommended by the National Sports Association as well as found suitable to join the school to attend school in sports school. Now, over the last 17 years, the school has produced eight Olympians with a few more to add to the list after this July's Olympic Games in Tokyo which we hope can happen safely. Now, these are some of the local and international achievements by our present and past student athletes. And the numbers keep counting. Specifically, for example, at the last SEA Games in the Philippines, past and present student athletes of the school contributed one third of the total medal haul. How did the school help our children achieve both sports and academic success? and why your child should choose sports school if he or she wants to represent Singapore in the chosen sports one day. Now, because the school is about nurturing your child to be a champion in his or her chosen sports, to be a champion for sports, and more importantly, to be a champion in life. So we aim to maximize your child's sports potential through high quality sports development and performance support. As we are part of sports, as we are part of Singapore's high performing, high performance system, together with the National Youth Sports Institute, the NYSI, the Singapore Sports Institute, SSI, and the respective NSA. We will support your child's educational aspiration through our athlete-friendly academic program and support. We will develop your child into resilient and future-ready citizens with good character and leadership. Now we do all these by developing a child from a long-term athlete development perspective. So besides the high quality coaching provided by our coaches, we work closely with the National Youth Sports Institute and the respective NSA to help your child realize his or her sports potential. 
the NYSI is cited within sports school to provide strong support for athlete development and performance, such as physiotherapy, psychology, performance analysis, nutrition, strength and conditioning. Now, beyond the excellent facilities found in sports school, our people and the strong partnership we have with Singapore's high performance system ensures that your child is well supported on his or her sports journey. Overseas training and competitions are part of the school's sports curriculum, so as to produce athletes who could represent Singapore. We are continuing to strengthen the partnership with our overseas partners, as well as working to develop new ones to support our children's development. The school is able to provide high degree of customization for your child, whether he is from the express, normal academic, or normal technical course. We will develop your child to be high performing school level athlete or to make it into the national youth squad or even the national team. The next diagram shows our athlete friendly academic pathway to support your child's sports pursuit. We offer the secondary and post-secondary program where most of our student athletes can progress on the true train pathway into our post-secondary programs where they can take the International Baccalaureate or any of our two customized polytechnic programs. There are also multiple entry points in the sports school. So if you are a primary six student, you can join us from SEC 1 after your PSLE. If you are a secondary school student, you can join us midstream in the secondary school program or the post-secondary program after your GC O levels. If you are currently in the ITE, Polytechnic, JC or MI, you can join us for our post-secondary programs and from there to progress in the local or overseas universities. Our academic programs are athlete friendly because most of our classes are conducted in small group settings. We provide flexible academic structures where you can progress at your own pace. Our academy mentors will guide you for the duration you are with us. And we ensure you can catch up with your academic learning should you need to miss lessons due to sports training or competitions. With our support, you can achieve your dream. Isabel Lee, for example, topped her 2014 Republic Poly cohort and is a recipient of the Public Service Commission Scholarship as well as a Yale NUS Dean Scholarship. Aoyong Waiyan, one of our last year's IBDP graduate, backed five medals from two SEA Games outings and scored 43 points out of a perfect score of 45 points. Mohamed Erwan, from the class of 2020, achieved two medals from two SEA Games outings and graduated with a merit diploma from the Republic Poly. And just a few days ago, you might have read in the news that Clarence Chu became the first Singapore-born table tennis player to qualify for the men's single event for the Olympics. Now, Clarence is a final year student athlete on our Republic Polytechnic program. But interestingly, he has also completed his national service. We are able to customize education around your child's sports pursuit. You might also know that in the same qualifying finals match last weekend, Clarence's opponent, Ko Wan Pang, was also from sports school and is currently serving his NS. Well, I would elaborate how we do all this customization and support for our student athletes uh, in this webinar, but you can find out more I, uh, on other platforms. At Singapore Sports School, student athletes can choose to stay at boarding for better time management formation of good habits, learning independence, and character development. Boarding, by the way, is not compulsory, right? It's not compulsory. Your child can choose to stay out and stay at home right, and travel to and fro school if he or she prefers. So a typical day for someone who chooses to stay in boarding could look something like this. Waking up for morning training if required, Otherwise, if there's no training, your child could sleep in until breakfast, go to a lesson, have lunch, attend more lessons, rest, followed by afternoon training. 
at dinner, followed by self-study time or night training if applicable. Thereafter, have breakfast and goes to bed by about 10.30 or 11 p.m. Now, at boarding, your child will receive nutritious meals, laundry service, a safe and secure home away from home environment, and practice good self-study habits. Beyond sports training and academic studies, we also leverage outdoor adventure camps to build character. Our children also learn to serve the community and how they can play a part to serve our society as they apply their values and learn through their service. We will develop your child holistically, even as he or she pursues sports and academic excellence. So at sports school, your child will have more than three adults looking after him or her. The coaches and general manager, the academy mentors and teachers, and the boarding mentor if he or she stays at boarding. So if you plan to join us, the following are the application timeline. Primary six students, please apply by 30th April, right? 30th April. While midstream transfers for secondary school students can take place throughout the year. Applicants to a post-secondary program should preferably be done before the start of the DSAJC or the early admission exercise for the poly program. Now, this is the application process and timeline for primary six students, which you can find in our website. Basically, whether you're a primary six student or a, a student planning, you know, or secondary school students planning to join us, go ahead and start applying now. So I've come to the end of my presentation. Join us if you want to represent Singapore in your chosen sports one day and be a champion in your sports, a champion for sports, and a champion in life. Remember, don't apply to sports school just as if it is just another good secondary school, but apply if you want to be a champion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ong, for your sharing. Now, for parents and for students, if you have any question after Mr. Ong's talk, do key them into the Q&A section that you will see at the bottom of your chat. All right. Now, I'm sure that many of you have learned more about the school from Mr. Ong's sharing, and you are excited to learn more about the experiences and the perspectives of our student athletes and the alumni who have gone through our school. This morning, we first have Nicholas Rahmadi. Now, Nicholas is an outstanding student who just graduated from the school last year. He's a 2019 SEA Games silver medalist in duathlon, and he's achieved very good and impressive 43 points for his International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. And he was also a charismatic and outstanding chairperson for the Council of School Captains from 2019 to 2020. This morning, he will be sharing with all of you. Nicholas, please. Hi, a very good morning to all parents and future student athletes of the Singapore Sports School. I am Nicholas Rokmadi, and I was from the Individual Program Academy Triathlon during my sports school days. I recently graduated last year in 2020, and I am now awaiting for enlistment into national service, as well as applying for university to further my studies. And just like many of you here, I was once a primary six student, thinking of a secondary school choice. So I attended various open houses in many schools like RI, ACSI, Hua Chong, and even this one in sports school. And despite getting DSA offers through swimming from some of them, I decided to go against the norm like my other swimmer friends. And I chose the sports school as I felt that it was the place to balance both sports and studies. Looking back, I never once regretted. And today, I would like to share my experience in the sports school and hopefully inspire you why sports school is the place for you to achieve your dreams in sports, academics, as well as in other aspects in life. So firstly, a little background of myself. I enrolled into the sports school in 2014 as a secondary one under the, sec under the swimming academy. And somewhere along the way in secondary four, collectively with the school and my parents, we evaluated and decided to tap on my strengths in long distance running 
And that got me adventuring into the sport of triathlon. Moving into the IB years, I took up the extended IB program to chase both my sporting dreams of representing Singapore at a major games level, as well as my academic pursuits as I hope to study medicine in the future. So the extended IB program is something that is exclusively offered by the sports school and is supported by both the IB organization as well as the World Academy of Sport for elite sportsmen to pursue sports at an elite level while juggling the rigors of IB. So instead of the usual two years of JC and IB, I did it in three years. And at the end of the day, it turned out well, having graduated from the sports school in 2020 with good IB results, which allowed me to apply for medicine in university, as well as the various government scholarships like the PSC scholarships. And also having the experience of competing at the 2019 SEA Games and winning a silver medal for Singapore. So here are some of my achievements. One of the highlights of my student athlete journey here in the sports school is winning the silver medal for the 2019 SEA Games, as well as receiving the inaugural Tan Hao Liang Excellence Award in 2021, which was presented to a graduating male student athlete from the sports school who has outstanding sport achievements and demonstrated strong leadership, passion, integrity, moral character and conduct, as well as community spirit. Other achievements in sport were also being the 2018 Triathlon National Champion, as well as being awarded the Under-18 High Performance Singapore Olympic Foundation Peter Lim Scholarship in 2019. Outside of sport, I was also given the opportunity to lead the school as the president of the 16th Student Council. So next slide. So now, what really makes us special? Number one, to me, I found that the sports school has a team of dedicated teachers who made learning a lot more efficient and fun. We have very small class size ratios where a class typically can have anywhere from 10 to just over 20 students. So our teachers were able to build the rapport with each and every student and also keep track of our progress in class. The teachers here are all fun loving and learning is really interactive in that sense. Being someone who travels overseas often to compete, I can say that it didn't hinder my academic performance in class as my teachers ensured that I was on track with makeup lessons prior to my trips, as well as after my trips. You know, in 2018, I was away from school for two months due to a training camp in Australia. However, my teachers were able to work around my training schedule, meeting me online for some lessons and sending me scanned documents of my completed assignments. So you could say that we started distant online learning even way before the current COVID situation. And this really made learning so much better, all thanks to our team of dedicated teachers and small class size ratios. Secondly, I think sports school is a place where everyone has an equal opportunity to grow and develop to unleash their full potential in sports and studies. You know, you have to understand that in this phase of a young budding student athlete, people develop at various paces, physically as well as intellectually. For the academic side of things, Sports School offers various pathways, such as the O and N level route, poly true train and IBDP true train programs. And the school allows that flexibility to venture into various programs, having met the prior prerequisites. For example, I have a senior who enrolled into the sports school under the normal academic stream and eventually got into the IB program and scored perfect points in the IB. And she is now a law student in NUS. At the same time, I have another senior who decided to pursue the RP Sports and Leisure Management two train program and is now a PSC SAF scholar. As for sports, I can personally talk about my own journey and how I benefited from the school's talent optimization program, which allows student athletes in the school to maximize their potential and talents in other sports. As seen in the picture on the right, that is Maximilian, Maximilian Ang and myself. So Max is one of my best friends in school and we both entered a sports school with big dreams of representing the nation one day at a major games, like the Sea Games, Asian Games, and possibly the Olympics. So while Max was talented in swimming, I went on to achieve many great feats, and he went on to achieve many great feats and national records. And I ventured into the sport of triathlon as I discovered my strength in running after the, the annual 2.4km NAFA test in school. So through the talent optimization program, it made me achieve more significant milestones. So just like how Max did it in swimming, I did so in triathlon. 
And five years later, in 2019, we both made our debut appearance at the 30th SEA Games. So every journey starts with a single step and we can all achieve our dreams. But it's just a matter of discovering the unknown and never being afraid to try. Lastly, to me, I feel that the sports school equips you with a fully and holistic package. Apart from being able to step up to hold various leadership positions in schools, such as being student counselor, ac academy captain, or the boarding captain, I think one thing that makes us stand out is the option of staying in boarding school. To me, it allows you to become independent, and more importantly, it allows you to adapt to your surroundings and forge many valuable friendships with people from various races, religion, and socioeconomic status. Personally, what benefited me the most was the fixed and well-balanced structure we had, which included the daily supervised study time from 7.45 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., which was a designated time for us to get our homework and revision done, while having academic teachers and external resource teachers available for consultation. Also, with various opportunities to travel overseas for competitions and training camps, you are able to learn and widen your horizons from coaches and competitors overseas. Personally, in secondary one, I have been to Sydney for a state championship age group event, and I was able to spar with many of the Australian top swimmers who were my age. We also stayed on for a training camp after the race, and we got to train with the various training groups around Sydney. And this really made us pick up good habits and techniques from the best. Another event around the region is the Thailand Sports School Games, where it is an, it is an inter, inter sport school games in several sports like swimming, track and field, football, etc between the various sports schools in the various provinces in Thailand, where the sports school in Singapore and two sports schools in Malaysia are also invited. So not only did we compete amongst ourselves, but the TSSG is typically an event which was fun going and it allowed us to establish strong friendships. And personally, I still do keep in touch with my friends from the various sports schools around the region. So to conclude and sum it up, I think you have arrived at a crossroad and it's time for you students to make that decision together with your parents. And I believe that it takes a village to raise a champion. And I strongly believe that the sports school is the village for you. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas, for that very inspiring message. And I'm sure many of the young primary six students out there will want to follow in your footsteps. Personally, for me, I've seen how Nicholas has grown up over the last seven years at the sports school and how he has really grown from a very shy set one student to the confident leader that he is today. Thank you, Nicholas. Well, next up, we have Jesslyn Hui. Jesslyn is from the Badminton Academy and is currently in our Through Train Diploma in Business Studies program offered jointly with Nian Polytechnic. Jesslyn has done very well in sports. She has competed in major games such as the 2018 Youth Olympic Games and the 2019 SEA Games where she has played with distinction. At the same time, she has consistently done well in her diploma studies and is one of the most disciplined and self-driven students that we have. Well, let's hear more on how she manages to juggle her sports and studies. Jesslyn, please. Hi everyone, thank you so much for the patience. Uh, we did have a technical error just now. So a very good morning to everyone. I'm Justin Hui, and it's my pleasure to speak to all of you today. It is very unfortunate that you can't meet in person, but I believe regardless, you will still have a good experience at the, at the open house today. So what I'll be doing today is I'll share my journey as a student athlete at Singapore Sports School and how I've benefited from the program. Before I begin, allow me to introduce a little bit about myself. I'm 21 this year, and I started playing badminton since I was nine. So it has been more than a decade that I've been playing, and currently, I'm representing Singapore in badminton. And I have been part of the team since 2017. At the same time, I'm also pursuing my diploma in business studies, entrepreneurship management at Neon Poly. I'm currently doing my internship at Quest Ventures as an investment analyst as part of my course. So this is a timeline of my journey as a student athlete in Singapore Sports School. Back in 2012, I went through what most of you are going through right now. I was choosing a secondary school that is athlete friendly so that I can continue to pursue my sporting aspiration. And I came across sports school. When I came here, I really liked the experience, the facility, facilities, the people, and the environment. Because stepping into this school, I really felt like I can be a professional athlete. And at a young age, it makes me feel like I can be something from this school. And so, 
I enrolled in 2013 as a SEC1 student. It was a very interesting and exciting chapter for me because my journey here at sports school, it forces me to mature way faster because of that. At that age, instead of doing what normal kids do, I was training like a professional. I trained twice a day, go for lessons and also supervise study time. I, was, I wasn't feeling like a kid. I started thinking more like an adult. I started taking ownership of my academics and training while making sure there is sufficient rest and recovery in between. So after my graduation at sports school, I enrolled into a true train pathway and started my tertiary education as an associate student athlete. The sports school made sure that after we graduate from secondary school, our sporting career will not be compromised. So the school partnered with Republic Poly and Neon Poly to give us athlete-friendly programs so that we can continue to comp compete competitively. So after four years, I'm, going, I'm finally going to graduate from Poly. It took me four years to complete my diploma because of my competition schedule. I was away at least once every month. Sometimes the entire month, I won't be in, I won't be in Singapore. The athlete-friendly program allows me to do that because we take one module per month instead of five modules concurrently. This is so that we only need to catch up on one module instead of five. And in the cases of missing school the entire month, we can defer the module and focus on sports. So here are some key achievements that I'm proud of as a student athlete in sports school. But this is, these results, all these results are not what I'm most proud of. What I'm most proud of is the journey and progress towards these achievements. They weren't accomplished overnight. There was a lot of hard work and resilience. There were days where I don't feel like training. There were some competitions that didn't go as planned. And obviously because of that, I was devastated. But the coaches, staff and teachers rebuilt my confidence, motivated me and kept pushing my boundaries to rise above what I have, what I have lost. And also my teammates, who are also my classmates. We basically see each other every day. First thing in the morning and last thing before we go to sleep next to each other. And because of that, we form a very unique bond. A bond where only we can understand. We understand each other so well that we know how to encourage each other, push each other, cheer each other up. And we also know how to, we can annoy each other. We have so much fun back when we are all staying in sports school. But over here, what I'm trying to say is the community and support system in this school really helped me in achieving what I've achieved so far. The pride and happiness when we win as a team makes all the hardships, the tears, blood and sweat so much more rewarding. So why is sports school? Other than what you see on the screen, which was what sparked my interest to join us the school years ago, to me, this school is special because of the belief that the people here have. Over here, all of us are chasing towards that same dream, that Olympic goal, that world number one title, and so many more. Every single one of us in this school, not just the students, but the teachers, the sports science staff, the coaches, truly believe that students in this school, the sports school, have the potential to reach there someday. They will really, really give you everything they got because we all believe in that dream. So after competing for so many years, I realized that other than my hard work in training, there are three things that will determine my success. My morale, my sleep and recovery, and my nutrition. These three things will give me the extra edge in a competition, especially when I hit to hit with a competitor. Sports school was able to give me that. The arena where I eat all my meals, a place to rest and recover before and after training, classrooms and training grounds so near that I won't waste time and energy traveling. It really did help me a lot and I really did enjoy my student athlete journey in sports school. I became this person that I never thought I would be. I became this person that always strive for the best. I'm resilient and strong. I don't get knocked down easily and even if I do, I bounce back stronger and tougher. I'm independent. I know what is best for me and I take ownership in that. I understand the importance of sportsmanship, that I should always respect my competitors no matter what. So thank you, Sports School, for teaching me that. You may also realize that I don't talk much about the, my education journey in Sports School because studying is hard work. If you listen to your teachers, you do your homework, you study well, you revise, you will get good results. But sports, there is only one champion. I'm speaking from my perspective as an individual sports person. There are five team members in my team. We put in the same time and effort. We do the same program. We do everything together. But out of the five of us, there's only one champion. So, if you can build the mindset of a champion, you don't have to worry about education because that mindset, that mindset of a champion translates to every part of your life. The teachers in sports school are there to make sure you're on the right track. They are there for you, but it is up to you to do the work. So my question to you now is, is your dream big enough? And are you brave and hungry enough to turn that dream into reality? And if you are, 
And I hope that you are. Sports school is the best place to give you a head start in that dream. Thank you everyone for your time. Thank you, Justin, for that very inspiring message. Indeed, you are an excellent example of our school's mission of producing learner champions with character. So, you know, even when Jaslyn was a student at the sports school, she was always busy with her training, with her studies and her many commitments. But she was still a school captain in our school, contributing and developing as a leader and also became a national captain eventually for the SEA Games squad in 20, it, it, that happened recently. So indeed, she's grown all around as an athlete, as a student, and as a leader. So we are very proud of Jaslyn. And what she said, if you have a dream, then sports school is the place to help you nurture that dream and to make that dream come true. Well, we're going to take some questions from now. Um, so you can post your questions in the Q&A section and uh, you can then, we'll then answer your questions in this chat. We will also get our panel on hand to answer some of the more common questions asked. So on the panel today, we have uh, Mr. Ong Kim Soon, our principal, whom you met earlier. We also have Ms. No Ying Siu, our Director of Academics. We also have Ms. Tan Bilian, our Director of Sports. Mr. Sun Chun Bun, our Director of Corporate Services. Mr. Joshua Singh, Assistant Director for Boarding and of Business. And I will answer some questions related to student development. Okay, let's look at some of the questions that have been raised this morning. Well, the first question goes to our principal, Mr. Ong. And this question asks, what is the PSLE cutoff point to enter the sports school? And can a student apply through DSA? Mr. Ong, please. Yeah, thanks, Erin. So uh, basically, uh, you must understand that we are sports school. So our priority is really looking at your child's sports development. And we will do what is necessary to assess your child to see whether he or she is suitable to come into sports school. So the ad admission criteria is not based on academic uh, scores. But of course, if your child is taking PSLE, he or she must first uh, be eligible to be promoted to a secondary school, right? So you cannot fail your PSLE. So if the students are listening in, please continue to work hard and study hard and train hard. Now, do we therefore have cut off points for the various streams? We do not, right? And not because we hold low standard. Uh, the reality is that many right, high scoring PSLE students have joined us in the past and they continue to join us. Kids who score 270 points, 250, 40 points, 230 points. Uh, they've all been with us. Similarly, right, kids who are in the NT program, in the NA program, they have also all come in because, not because of academic scores, right? So that's the reason why I say upfront that we are not just another good secondary school. Our selection criteria is based on your child's sports potential, right? And uh, whether he's suitable to join us. So if in doubt, just go ahead and apply and then give us a chance to assess you and help your child decide whether this is the right place for you. So do we participate in DSA? Now there's a bit of confusion of terms, right? Direct, direct school admission, right? admission to sports school is definitely via direct school admission. But we do not, we are not part of the MOE DSA process. In other words, you can't find sports school when you go into the MOE DSA portal to apply for us. You need to apply directly to us. In fact, as part of this collaboration and partnership to ensure your child is well taken care of, if you want to come to sports school, you actually still need to apply for secondary school under the secondary school DSA, um, secondary school option. That option, that school that eventually your child is posted to serve as your posted school. So that if your child decides right, that he or she wants to go back to the mainstream school uh, because sports school is not so suitable for him or her, he can then return to the posted school. So how then do you apply to sports school? you apply directly. So in that sense, right, it's direct school admission to us. And then we have a separate assessment and selection for your child, right? So I hope I made that clear. We do not have academic cut off, right? Our criteria is really looking at your sports, your child's sports potential and ability, right? But nonetheless, like I assure you, many high performing sports uh, PSLE scorers come and join us because of their love for sports, right? 
and you still need to take part in the uh, secondary school option so that that school become, you know, um, well, I don't use the safety net, but it's sort of served as that as a posted school, which, which you can return to uh, if you decide uh, to leave us uh, midway. Okay, so I hope I answer those questions. Back to you, Erwin. Thank you, Mr. Ong. The next question is a sports-related question. I'll ask our Director of Sports, Ms. Tan Bilian. And this question goes, with not much competition going on last year and this year, how will you select students into the sports school? And what is the admission criteria for sports? Bilian, please. Thanks for the question. Um, Ms. Song earlier mentioned that admission criteria is really based on the sports potential and ability. So uh, when we assess that, we don't just actually look at um, recent competition achievements. Of course, with trials, it will definitely be easier where previous years, I think we are able to actually invite everyone in to have a face-to-face -face assessment. Without that, um, basically we look at their track record. So I would encourage all parents, um, when you register your child for admission, um, do provide us with as much information as possible. Um, so we look into the child's past record in um, participation in their particular sports, their experience, um, if possible, provide us with testimonials. Um, subsequently, I think when, when they're shortlisted for interviews, we will also assess them based on um, their motivations. Actually, it's a both-way assessment. Um, so the, the child and the parent will also then uh, be able to ask questions and see whether they also see a fit um, for the child to be enrolled in sports school. Thank you. Thank you, Bilian. Another sports question for you. How many sports can a student take? And can students switch sports later during their sports school life? So when, when a child gets admitted into sports school, um, administratively, we will put the child under one sport. So we call that the, the parent sport. Um, but of course, if the child is talented, and um, that, that's why earlier I mentioned that if possible, provide us with as much information as possible in whatever experiences that your child has. Um, along the way, uh, we do have multi-sports program and um, talent optimization program where we do expose students in um, different sports. And in the event that um, either the child indicates interest or the coach actually indicates that actually the child has other talents, uh, we will be able to actually get the child to be also going for competitions in other sports. Um, and if the child decides to totally make a switch, uh, that it is possible as well. That, that is what we call a talent transfer. So, so everything is possible in sports school as, as long as um, you re really provide all the information to us and um, our coaches will actually assess the, the students along the way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bilian. Well, a question from a parent. How can I prepare my child who's interested to come to the sports school and how do I prepare my child to gain admission into the sports school? Bilian? Thanks. I think the parents have done the first thing right now um, by being involved in coming in for this webinar. So uh, other than that, uh, I think after that, I would really encourage you to get into our website, take a look at the admission tab um, and really look, in, look through the admission process. I think beyond that, uh, beyond the administration process, um, I think the, the, all parents, you really need to um, really talk to your child and understand what will be the aspiration of the child. Yeah, we will also do that when we actually conduct the interview session. Because I think it's, it's yes, Ms. Ong. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, finish. Yeah. Um, because we really find that, um, like Ms. Ong mentioned, it's not really just finding a secondary school. I think it's beyond that. Because... Um, the, when, when you get involved in a sports training in sports school, it is not just a CCA. It is actually a core curriculum. And we do not just look at uh, keeping the child within the secondary curriculum. We would like as much as possible to extend that so that um, we can actually provide a longer journey for the child to develop and progress mm -hmm. and, and really um, attain whatever goals that the child has. Yeah, sorry. Thanks, uh, Bilian. So, uh Actually, as parents, I can understand that we really want to find the best opportunities for our children. 
Um, but uh, the whole idea is, uh, and, and we sometimes try to strategize, but my encouragement is uh, don't over strategize because it is really about a long-term development of your child. It is really not about getting into sports school and how to get in, but rather looking at your child's interest, passion and uh, talent, and then holistically encourage, nurture, right? Uh, encourage your kids to play more sports, right? Uh, learn how to relate to people so he learns how to work with teams, right? Be serious and be focused about his studies, be clear what he wants to do so that he comes in ready. So if anything else, how to prepare, it is really about holistic development of your child to make sure he comes in with a love and passion for sports and is resilient and willing to work with us. And so the whole idea, like I say, is not about how to get your child into sports school per se, you know, but how to ensure right, that he is a right fit for sports school so that we can work with you to develop him or her right, into the highest potential in his sports, in his academic pursuit, right, and in his holistic development right, to be a useful citizen right, in the longer term as well. Okay, so I hope just to clarify that. Hey, don't over strategize, please. Can Thank I, you, Mr. Ong. And can I just jump in again? Um, sure. Um, I think we, we, we also say that um, there are multiple entry, entry points to sports school. So, so even, I believe there are many uh, P6 uh, parents here. So even if um, at this point in time for secondary one, your child is not um, ready, uh, you can continue to actually, uh, you know, uh, get in touch with us and, and as and when the child is ready, uh, I think they, we, you can actually enroll them at any point in time. Thank you. Next question pertains to our academic director. Um, so she'll be answering this question. Um, I'm very interested to join the IB or the Poly True Train program. Is there a minimum score I need to attain at the PSLE? And how do you select students for these True Train programs? Ing Siu, please. Thank you, Owen, for the question. Um, first and foremost, I think the first question that Mr. Ong took earlier this morning is about whether is there a cutoff to come into sports school. So as Mr. Ong mentioned earlier, there is no cutoff to come into sports school. So when the child comes in, it's actually based on his or her potential and performance in sports. So now we're looking at perhaps later on as the child progress with us, and we go into the post-secondary pathways, is there some minimum, uh, minimum entry points and also achievements that they need to attain before they can progress into the IB or the polytechnics? So now that there is actually, so that we can allow our students to cope and eventually progress because we do not want to progress the child into a program that he or she eventually cannot cope with and end up not being able to achieve either sports nor education. So we do have uh, in place certain guidelines and certain perhaps um, admission scores to make sure that they are able to cope. Okay? But that said, um, these are similar to the admission guidelines applied in the mainstream institutions. So for instance, to get into the IB program, it will be similar to how they will need to score in order to go into a mainstream JC program. All right. But once again, that said, admissions into these post uh, children programs is first and foremost dependent on the sports potential and performance. So in fact, these two train programs are precisely designed with the high performing athletes in mind to allow them to achieve aspirations in both sports and education concurrently. So if right now, we are not too sure what is the best program for, for, for the child right now or for the students right now. It's okay to give us a, a drop us a note and we can actually talk to the child to help them understand which is the best pathway for them and also alongside their sports, which is most appropriate for them to progress in both so that they can achieve their aspirations in both. Thank you, Ying Siu. Another Sorry, question I... for you, oh, Ms. Song, please. Sorry, maybe I just add that. Um, so essentially, like what Ying Siu say, uh, the whole idea is not just about you know, the academic program. But you will realize, like what Ingsu explained to you, the academic program is actually here to support your child's uh, sports pursuit. And we do have, right, just to assure you, we do have kids, even with PSLET score of 190, 170 something, uh, 190 plus at least, right, who made it into an IB program, for example. So it really depends on what he or she wants to do. Uh, that's possible. In the same way, we also have kids who are scoring very high PSLT score coming with 250, 260, 270, uh, who chooses right, the poly diploma program because it better fit the sports uh, development. So the whole idea here, that's why I started off by telling parents here, don't look at sports school just as another good secondary school. We're here to support your child's sports pursuit and dreams right, with our, our academic program, with our sports training, and to ensure he or she achieve his potential in both. All right, sorry, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Ong. 
Well, um, next question also to Ying Siu. Um, Mr. Ong mentioned that there are many overseas trips that a child may go to and many competitions to take part in. So to Ying Siu, how are students supported academically to help them cope with their studies and their sports? Thanks, Irene. Actually, it's a very common question. A lot of students and parents do ask this question because indeed they are concerned with so many overseas competitions, training that happens. How do the students cope to make sure that they are not falling behind academically? So one of the features which was mentioned earlier was how the sports school structure is. There's a lot of attention that's given to the students because of the smaller class sizes in our school. And this is actually very useful because it allows the teachers to offer targeted help when the students need this additional support. Now, the other unique feature of sports school is the supervised self-study time. So what we call SST in this school. So this is a time which is protected for boarders or even non-boarders actually to complete their assignments or to revise their work. So in fact, all the students can make arrangements to consult the resource teachers or even make arrangements with their own subject teachers to clarify their doubts during the SST, which will take place on Monday to Thursdays from 7.45 to 9.30 p.m. So what students can do is just to indicate that they would like some support in which subject and they can make arrangements with the resource teacher or their subject teachers to actually come online or even face-to-face, -face, depending on the situation, and some help can be given to them. All right. And students who miss lessons because of training and competition, they are not forgotten. In fact, that we actually do help them draw up a makeup schedule. So students who are new to us in lower secondary, the academy mentors will actually handhold them to teach them how do you do up a makeup a schedule so that all these subjects which they have missed out on can be caught up later on when they are back. In fact, if they can plan in advance, then before they leave for the competitions and trainings, some of this work can be done in advance as well. But nonetheless, if they have to miss up, miss out on all this learning that happens in class. You can actually catch up either through online learning or face-to-face -face sessions with their teachers when they come back, right? So in sports school, we are quite big on online learning and we have set up our own virtual classrooms. So that has been very useful for our students to learn independently, whether or not they are physically here with us in school. Hope that answers the question. Thank you, Ying Siu. Well, the sports school is 17 years old already, and we have produced many sports champions. And if you interview many of these sports champions, they'll always talk about the tremendous support we provide them academically to make sure they never fall behind. And in fact, they're always very well supported. The next uh, question pertains to boarding, all right? So the question is, is boarding compulsory? Can students board only a certain number of days and how many boarders are there for every room? Can I ask Mr. Joshua Singh, our Assistant Director of Boarding, to answer that question? Joshua, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Erwin. Uh, well, yes, uh, we do have the boarding facility in Singapore Sports School. Uh, we have uh, four blocks and we have eight levels and we have the capacity to, to actually cater to about 500 beaters. Uh, in the COVID-19 situation, um, we have to reduce the number of uh, capacity and uh, boarding is actually not compulsory. So for student athletes um, who choose uh, to board, they are actually uh, required to board at least three days uh, within a week itself so that they can maximize their time to learn and also in their sports training. And also boarders will be assigned to four beaters or six beaters. So we're looking at like two within a four beta and three within a six beta. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. So another parent has asked this question, will my child be developed as a leader at the sports school? Well, I'll answer that one. You know, at the sports school, we believe that every one of our students has the leadership potential and will be given leadership exposure for him to develop himself or herself. So at the school, we have about 250 official leadership positions, whether they're in the student council, they are sports captains, boarding captains, or class reps, or even lead in organization of activities like the Values in Action program. And during these leadership opportunities, they are well guided by their mentors and teachers how to lead and how to lead successfully in organizing events. All our students in Sec 1, 2, and 3 also go through a leadership program where they go through a curriculum taught the five practices from Kozis and Posner called the Leadership Challenge. And they go through a four day, three night camp, which builds on the leadership skills that they have learned over the leadership program in our school. So yes, 
when your child comes into the sports school, they will have that opportunity to have a leadership platform to develop their leadership and expose them to opportunities to grow as a potential leader. All right, next question for Mr. Ong. If we have been offered a spot in the sports school before the PSLA results, do we have to accept it right away or can we wait till after the PSLE results? And are we still able to apply for secondary school postings after accepting sports schools offer? Mr. Ong, please. Okay, so um, uh, we certainly would like you to uh, let us know whether you want to take up the place once we offer you the place. The reason being that um, uh, we, it allows us to then uh, offer the place to other students if let's say you're not uh, keen to do so. However, I understand what parents are thinking. You really uh, don't want to close your doors to other options. Uh, uh, so if really that be your consideration, it is okay, you can wait, right? Uh, although, like I say, uh, more importantly, um, you don't want to look at sports school just as another school. Uh, if you are very clear about it, then come and apply and join us uh, and then start with us as soon as you can. But uh, at the end of the, uh, uh, rather, uh, when PSLE results are out, okay, uh, you will still need to apply for a secondary school option. Now, that is necessary because uh, like I explained earlier, that will become your posted school, which you can return to if uh, subsequently you change your mind and you uh, don't want to continue with us in sports school. Okay. Um, with regards to whether you, you can apply for other DSA school, actually the answer is yes. Uh, you can apply to other DSA school as well. Uh, but I also need to caution that uh, once you accept other DSA schools, right, then uh, the offer from us uh, lapsed. Okay, so just want to clarify those points. Thank you, Mr. Ong. Another question for you, Mr. Ong. This is from a parent. I'm very interested to get my child into the sports school, but it is very competitive to get into the sports school. So the question is, how many students do you take in every year for the Sec 1 cohort? On average, we take about 100 a year, uh, thereabout. Um, and like I say, uh, but it varies, right? So last year, we decided that we will take in only about 80. So it really depends on the cohort that, uh, that is applying. And uh, like I say, it is not about the academic cutoff, but we're really looking very carefully at your child sports uh, potential and talent, as well as uh, finding a right fit. Right? So the child really must believe in what the sports school is doing and want to come here and then we will be able to offer your child a place. So I would say, don't just worry about the numbers. In terms of numbers, yes, it looks scarily uh, competitive, right? We have about 400 over applicants last year. We took in only about you know, 80. Uh, but like I say, it is not about us trying to chop your child off, right? It's really about finding the right fit. So, yep, so just go try right, and just apply and let us have a chance to assess your child and then uh, work with you to decide whether that's the right place for you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ong. Well, a question for our sports director. What are the usual training hours that a student goes through every day in the course of a week? Lillian? Okay, um, that really depends on the sports that you are in. Generally, all, if I'm talking about sec secondary one, so all will have at, mid at least like a five-day training. So it is unlike other secondary schools where in CCAs you train two to three times a week. So it's everyday training. Some of the sports actually require training in, uh, on Saturdays as well. And uh, for some sports that requires double training, we will do so in the morning, um, in the afternoon or in the afternoon and at night. Well, we have come to the end of our session today, but we will keep this webinar session on for another 15 minutes so that those of you who want your questions answered, you can still get your answers from us through the chat function. Please also feel free to contact us on our hotline and email. Also today, from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., we will start a live chat session and you can assess our live chat on our Sports School website. We will have another live chat session on Wednesday, 31st of March from 12 to 2 p.m., so you can log in again.
do also take time to look through our videos and information about our school on our e-open house page where all the videos are posted. Well, we hope you found today's webinar useful. And for those students who look forward to joining us next year, do register with us. Thank you for logging in and we hope you have had uh, an informative and beneficial session. See you at the sports school in 2022. Sorry, uh, Erwin. Yes. Could I just ch uh, jump in just to quickly uh, uh, address, you know, a little bit of uh, some of the concern that might have kind of still be left hanging. Uh, I saw some question about school fees and all that as well. So which we probably didn't get to answer those. Um, I just want to assure parents here and students here, don't let fees be a hindrance to you, all right? It does not mean that we have unlimited resource to support you, but having said that, all right, if you're really talented in sports, you love sports, you want to represent Singapore, come and join us, all right? We have various uh, support schemes to make sure that your child receives the necessary support, right? Whether it's a boarding fee, school fees, or overseas trip, Right, we will be able to bring your child right, uh, with the necessary support. So do not worry about fees. And the earlier questions about all that concern about academic results, whether it's it entry requirement, whether it's a progression to IB, poly, and all that. Like I say, the focus, right, similar to the question about fees, is really about your child. It's about the student athlete. How passionate is he or she? How determined is he or she to pursue sports? And if he or she wants that and really desire to do his or her best in sports, right, don't have to worry about the academic, right, don't worry about the pathway, right, because if those are your main worry, then perhaps this may not be the right place because there are many other schools out there which your child can pursue your academic pathway. But if you do come to sports school, understand that all these academic programs are here to support your child Right, to get to where he or she wants, right? first and foremost, for the sports that he or she uh, desire to pursue. All right? So our focus is really on the child. Right? The criteria are all means and ways to help us support your child on his or her journey. So I hope I uh, give that assurance. Right? So if everything else that you're unsure, just bear in mind our focus is on your child. Not sure, apply, come and see us, and then we'll be happy to advise you, assess, and we'll let you know. All right? So, yeah, thank you very much, and thanks for joining us. I'm sorry to just interrupt uh, at the last minute. Uh, Erwin, you want to uh, wrap up properly? And yeah, thank them. you, Mr. Ong. Well, parents, again, we will keep the webinar session on for another 15 minutes. So if you still want your questions answered, you can still get your answers from us through the chat function. Well, it leaves us now to wish you a very good weekend and we hope to see you at the Sports School in 2022. Thank you.